All right, so the first part of cellular respiration was glycolysis. And then the next stage or phase is called the Krebs cycle. And so what happens is those two smaller molecules from glycolysis, they enter the mitochondrion. And again, we said that the site of cellular respiration is the mitochondrion, all right? And so those two molecules uh, go through a cycle and this cycles the Krebs cycle and it goes around twice because there's two of those uh, three carbon uh, molecules and what happens is during those two cycles six carbon dioxides are released all right and two ATPs so from the Krebs cycle you only get two ATPs so from glycolysis we got zero net and then uh, in the Krebs cycle we get two so and we started out saying that there's 36 right so so uh, we still have a bunch of ATPs that need to be produced right so the energy released from the breaking down of these two small molecules this energy is transferred in the form of hydrogen ions and electrons and these are transported to what is called the electron transport chain. That's the last of the of the processes within cellular respiration. And so, as we said, uh, glycolysis was in the cytoplasm in anaerobic conditions. Then, if we look at uh, the Krebs cycle, it's within the mitochondrion and it is aerobic. It's with oxygen and, and oxygenated uh, conditions. And so here's one of my drawings uh, just to show that you have the two small molecules going into the mitochondrion. Uh, the Krebs cycle occurs and six carbon dioxides are released. In the same time, two carbon, uh, two ATPs are produced. Right, and so the last part of cellular respiration is called the electron transport chain. And this chain is is a set of transport proteins that's found in, in that's embedded in the inner lining of the of the mitochondrion right and so that those hydrogen ions and electrons that are released during the Krebs cycle are going to be converted into ATPs in a process called chemiosmosis right? uh, the specifics you don't really need to know all right but but those uh, hydrogen ions and electrons allow for uh, the formation of ATPs by this process called chemiosmosis during the electron transport chain. All, when all is said and done, uh, 34 ATPs are produced during the electron transport chain. Um, there's hydrogen ions are released in chemi chemiosmosis and when that happens you have oxygen there and that oxygen accepts those hydrogen ions and when that happens they form waters and so there's our other product of cellular respiration so here's a drawing of the electron transport chain you can see there are different uh, set a set of of transport proteins within the inner lining of the mitochondrion when chemiosmosis occurs Hydrogen ions are released inside the inside the mitochondrion, and there's oxygen there, so the hydrogen ions and the oxygen rearrange themselves to form water. Um, and through chemiosmosis, uh, 34 ATPs are produced. So if we look at ATP molecules from one glucose molecule, 
we get two in the Krebs cycle, we get 34 in the electron transport chain, and that gives us a grand total of 36 ATP molecules within uh, from one glucose molecule. And so, as you can see, the electron transport chain is very efficient in produce and taking that energy and converting it into ATP energy. Um, again, there's a lot of things, especially the electron transport chain, there's a lot of things happening, well, in the Krebs cycle and glycolysis as well, uh, within the more specific things that are going on. Again, this is a very uh, broad aspect of what's what happens and if you're uh, curious about more specifics we can talk about it or uh, you can look on in your book uh, and it goes into great detail on how uh, cellular respiration and photosynthesis work. Uh, bacteria and some ye uh, fungi like yeast um, don't undergo cellular respiration. Uh, they undergo an anaerobic respiration we call fermentation. And so there are two types of fermentation. Uh, there's one called alcoholic fermentation where uh, alcoholic beverages are made using this process. And if you look at the first part of the reaction for alcoholic fermentation, you can see glucose is broken down into two uh, smaller molecules, right, in glycolysis. And so glycolysis, the, the process of glycolysis is shared by both fermentation and aerobic uh, or cellular respiration. And that's something that you would want to uh, know for your second exam that glycolysis is shared by both fermentation and cellular respiration, right? And so you have those two pyruvate molecules or two smaller molecules uh, and then if you cut off some more carbon and oxygen uh, you get ethanol, two ethanol molecules. Uh, and two ATPs are produced. So you can see that fermentation is n not uh, not very efficient in capturing the energy that glucose has, right? And so a lot of energy is wasted or released and only two ATPs are produced. But since bacteria and very simple fungi are, are small and they, their energy requirements are a lot less um, than a, two ATPs are, are okay for, for them. For our cells that would be way uh, too few uh, to, be, to be wasting. And so if you take some apples and let them kind of rot Ish, not rot, but get old and start, you know, liquefying. And you can take the the pulp and the the juice and stuff, and you can squeeze it through some some filter like cheesecloth, right? And you capture the fluid part of that into in, in, capture it in like a flask, right? And then if you take yeast and sugar and you uh, put those in with that liquid uh, slurry uh, and you stopper that flask up with a, a rubber stopper that has a hole in it and if you put a uh, like a glass rod uh, tube a glass tube in through that uh, opening of the stopper and on one end, the end that is uh, outside of the stopper, you attach a rubber tube. What you can do is you can take that tube and place it in water. And since you have in 
alcoholic fermentation, you have carbon dioxide being released, all right? And so if you add the yeast, add the sugar, have the, the uh, apples, uh, apple juice and pulp, uh, and, and you start this fermentation process, carbon dioxide is going to be released and you're going to watch the bubbles form uh, in the water at the end of the tube. So you continue to feed the yeast and it continues to bubble and as, as long as it's bubbling you know that fermentation is going on. Uh, once the bubbling stops uh, you can take the solution I would suggest filtering it several times uh, and then what you have is Applejack. Uh, I've never done this so I don't know if it works or not I haven't tried it so um, so that's that I've just been told that that's the way it works now if you left uh, if if this bubbling stops and if you still feed the yeast and leave it what will happen is those two ethanol molecules will then convert into another type of molecule we call vinegar and so you'll get apple, apple cider vinegar and if that's your end result then then that's what you would do you would just continue to feed the yeast and it would convert the ethanol molecules into vinegar the other type of fermentation is called lactic acid fermentation this is where uh, you have glycolysis occurring you have those two smaller molecules and then uh, those molecules are then converted into lactic acid uh, molecules and we use this when we're making uh, buttermilk, uh, yogurt, other kinds of uh, dairy products um, but if you are running in a marathon and as you're running um, you start panting. You don't get good deep breaths into your lungs and so what you're doing is you're actually breathing in the oxygen but you're blowing out m most of that oxygen if you're panting, right? You, it doesn't get deep into the lungs and so if you start panting your your body starts getting less and less oxygen, alright? And so in order for uh, muscle cells to work they have to have enough oxygen right cellular so respiration is an aerobic process so you have to, to to have oxygen in order for cellular respiration to to occur in your muscle shell muscle cells right so if you're not getting the oxygen that you need in those muscles then uh, what happens is the muscle cells start converting glucose into lactic acid and it undergoes lactic acid fermentation and once it does as it does it those cells build up as a side effect it's lactic acid and therefore the next day when you get up out of bed all your muscles are sore and that's because your muscle cells underwent lactic acid fermentation. So that's a that's a neat little factoid, right? And so this is these are chapter six and seven again, very broad. And and uh, if you want more detail, we can talk about it, or you can look at your book. All right. Next will be chapter seven. I mean, sorry, chapter 8.